How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now I'm testing out a micro inverter that I found online. And what makes this substantially different from let's say an end phase micro inverter is this actually claims that you can plug it directly into a 120 volt outlet in your home and receive that power into your home even when your home is grid tied. Now obviously that claim is very interesting because it's kind of a plug and play setup and there are a few products over the years that have claimed to be a plug and play setup but for this one you could buy this microinverter that can accept in four different panels and that'd be up to a total of 1200 watts of solar power. And then let's say you get some used solar panels in your area so you keep your costs down and then you're up and running plugging power directly into your home and helping offset your monthly energy bill. But is it too good to be true? So let's show you the overview of this unit and I'm testing it out right now. So I'll share with you my results because I am concerned. I saw a lot of feedback on this unit overheating, create too much heat and shutting down. So that's what I'm trying to test out today. And in addition, we'll talk about code. There seems to be maybe a code issue here plugging a power source into the grid can cause some issues. So I'll be touching on that as well. But first, let's go ahead and show you what I'm currently producing and talk about the overall system setup. Now you'll see a link in the description to this exact unit. The way it works, you can find actually two solar panel input microinverters just like this. And it looks like then they just stack two units on top of each other. Now this is made by Y and H, but overall it looks like there's probably one manufacturer. And then on Amazon, you'll see multiple different brands selling the exact same product. None of them have a ton of reviews and it seems very common that they overheat. I just wanna test it out and kind of start the conversation because if something like this were to work, it could be a very cost-effective solution. So we have our four inputs here. The voltage operating range is going to be between 17 volts and 50 volts for each one of these. I'm using Helium 360 watt panels with an open circuit voltage of 48.6 volts. So I'm right at the upper range of what this could accept. Now these panels will be getting clipped. The current would be a little higher. They could provide in perfect condition a little bit more current than what this could accept. So they will limit this down to a maximum of 300 watts per input. Then you have your AC output and then your AC output actually does have a small display. Now this display, although it's kind of convenient, it shows me right now that I'm producing 870 watts of total power from the setup. It is completely not weather sealed. It should be in its own container. You have screw terminals wide open here for your current clamp there. It's convenient, but be careful having this out open to the environment because this could be one of your first failure points. And then you just go to your 120 plug. Again, the big difference here is we have 120 volts output compared to let's say an end phase microinverter which is going to be 240 volts output and not claim to tie directly into your electrical system without the addition of something like a combiner box and the proper disconnects in your home. Now overall the conditions are very forgiving today. It's about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside but it is starting to warm up so I'm going to use this FLIR thermal imaging camera to see what we have for skin temperature and see if there's any hot spots on this unit. All right. Right, so outdoor conditions, if I just go off of the wood or the ground, again, it's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Then if we go up to our micro inverter, we are reading 85. Looks like we got a localized hot spot, upper left-hand corner, 94 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall, we are warming up, but it's not getting too concerning. Again, right now, there's a lot of heat rejection going on between the skin here and the environment because overall, it's just a much cooler day outside. So then I just have the extension cord here running over to an outlet, a GFCI outlet on the exterior of the home. Now, specifically for this test, I do have a small energy analyzer set up here, which helps us see how much did we produce during the duration of the test. So I use this to kind of understand different appliances and how much they consume, but it works perfectly for this one as well. So currently we're, we have had a high in terms of the power that we output of 953. Now currently I'm only getting 370, 400, 430, 
going up and settling out at around 470 where the sun's coming out a little bit more we have produced over one kilowatt hour and that is over two hours and 22 minutes of run time now with this being an overcast day that's not too bad it's substantially offsetting the overall energy consumption of this home just with this small setup but what you do want to consider is this 1200 watts coming through here that would be a 10 amps so be careful on what gauge of wire you have for your extension cord. A lot of extension cords are 16 gauge. You might want to go up to a 14 gauge or maybe all the way up to a 12 gauge depending on your length that you're running or you are going to have some line losses where you're going to lose power just coming through this extension cord before it actually gets to your house. So just from the standpoint of does this thing function, does it work? Absolutely, I've been pretty impressed, but overall remember this is a cool day out. So one of the biggest complaints I see online of this overheating, we're not really testing that at all. Now it is truly plug and play and you're up and going in a, literally a matter of minutes. Now one big question is how do we plug directly into the grid and how is that safe? Right, so if you're plugging a generator into your electrical panel or any other source of power, well, if the grid turns off the power, you would be back feeding on the grid, causing a dangerous situation, and that's absolutely against code. So you would think that this would be completely against code, but when it comes to this product, it actually monitors that there's power on in the home before it would produce any power from the overall microinverter. So if power is off, if the grid is down, this will not produce any more power into your grid, so it will not backfeed on the grid. I checked with my local inspector asking this exact question because I was a little skeptical, and he said that he would approve that overall setup as long as it's capable of not feeding power back on the grid in a power down situation. Now there's a lot of different use cases for this type of setup, and again, that cost is much lower. Now, if I wanted to replace my entire monthly energy consumption, I would probably go for more of a professionally mounted system that comes with a 20 or 25 year warranty. So if you're interested in going down that road, which I did this year with an 11 kilowatt system on my home, check a link in the description. That will send you over to where I started to estimate the size of a system I need. And then overall, what is the estimate cost of what that would cost me? Then if you wanna dive a little deeper, they can connect you up with local installers in your area where you can lock in some quotes from multiple installers and then see which installer is the right one for you. Now, one thing I want to note is usually on any type of electronic device, you'll find all sorts of certifications and especially the UL or Underwriters Lab certification that it has been through testing and has passed. This one, I can't find anything on it anywhere. So just buyer beware, you'll see the unit below the video in the description in a link but be careful check with your local inspector do your own testing because there's not many certifications if any certifications on this microinverter now i am going to continue to test this overall microinverter i have an emporia energy monitor in my 200 amp panel in the home i'm going to reconfigure that for a solar input and i want to track over multiple days or even weeks how much power am i producing from this microinverter and how much is that offsetting my power bill in this small 1,000 square foot home. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So when those new videos come out updating this test, you'll get the latest video in your feed. Let me know any experience you guys have with these type of plug and play inverters. I know they're a little bit more common in Europe, but I love getting your guys' feedback. And don't forget in the comment session, there is a gold mine of information. Now, if you're just getting started in solar, you might need a better understanding of how to wire solar panels together to get the most power output. You need to understand series, parallel, and series parallel to get you started in your solar DIY journey. So check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all those different scenarios, giving you some tangible examples on a small setup at my home. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.